guys, it's Sophie. I'm going to be sharing my October wrap up with you guys today and I didn't read that much in October um, so it's fairly small um, but I will go, go through them all. I don't really know why I read so little in October. Um, I think one of the reasons is I played all three Spyro games to 100% um, and that took up quite a lot of my evenings and weekends so that's probably it. Also we had lots of house stuff that we were doing so it's just been a kind of a busy one and I didn't love a lot of the books that I read, I quite liked, <laughs> like I liked a lot, of, uh, liked a couple of them a lot but overall it wasn't like a blow me away type month um, but I think sometimes that happens when I read less anyway, like I find the more I read the more I enjoy the books I read I think. So we'll start, I've only got two non-fictions. The first one I have is The Honey Bee's Heart Has Five Openings by Helen Jukes um, and this was one that was on the Reader's Awards for the Books in My Bag. I received this one um, to share on my channel and I actually didn't read, physically read this copy and I do wonder if that affected the, how much I enjoyed it. Um, I listened to it on audio and I found the whole thing quite twee and surface level I think and I just didn't I just didn't like it as much as I thought I would. Um, yeah, it felt f far too gentle for me and it didn't feel like it delved enough into what was going on for her. Um, and I just didn't love it that much. I love the bits about the bees. I learned quite a lot about bees and I enjoyed that. And the next one I read was another one from the Books My Bag Readers Award. I did enjoy this one. Um, this was Wilding by Isabella Tree, um, which is about a couple's efforts to conserve um, their farms. They had a large area of land they used to use for like, traditional agricultural farming and that became unsustainable and they decided to look into how else they could use the land. And they went through the process of rewilding it. So kind of letting go and just letting nature do whatever it was going to do with that land as well as introducing some species that would have um, inhabited England before we started doing like intensive farming and I found this absolutely fascinating um, I think that it overturned a lot of the ideas I had about what England might have looked like and um, it's really cool in that there's like pictures of the things they did in there and you can also go on their channel on YouTube and see videos of what the project looks like now. Um, it was just a really gradual book kind of exploring it but I did find it really interesting and sad but also it's the kind of like wild version of Britain that I'm unlikely to see in my lifetime even though I live and have always lived in the countryside. Like my version of the countryside is very much one that is shadowed by the way we farm um, and I just found that really fascinating so I did really enjoy this one I think this was probably one of my favourites from the list um, yeah it made me talk to really close to nature so I definitely recommend this one if you're looking for um, a book around nature writing so the rest of what I read was fiction um, and the first of those was Margaret Atwood's The Testaments um, I picked this one up um, after it had jointly won the Man Booker. I'm really salty about that, um, so just really briefly because I didn't film any Man Booker videos this year, it was just too busy. Um, Bernadine Evaristo, I really wanted to win on her own. Um, her book is still, as we speak now in the middle of November, my favourite book I read this year. I thought it was absolutely incredible. I read it before the Booker Prize came up and when I was reading it I was thinking like this feels so much like a Booker book and I just really badly wanted her to be able to win and the Testaments, I enjoyed the Testaments. Um, it wasn't that I didn't like this book and I felt like I needed to read this um, because of the fact I was like annoyed when the result came out and I hadn't actually read it and I thought well maybe I'll read it and it will be really 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 deserving and I'll understand um, I thought it was good, I did give it five stars, it was a fun book to read, um, I liked that it came on from where we'd come from in The Handmaid's Tale, I read it super fast, I didn't expect it to be such a fast read, um, but I just, in, to me this didn't do half as much as um, Girl, Woman, Other did, so I enjoyed it, but it, the whole reading experience was like surrounded by man booker controversy so yeah i read the testaments this month the next one i read was topics of conversation by miranda popke got this one for review as well um and this is a book about women's lives and what we see and what we see only if we're part of a certain sphere of that person's life um the idea is that we understand a woman's path through life through her conversations with a number of other different women at different times in her life um, and I did enjoy this, um, 
I kind of felt like it felt more like short stories than it did a singular narrative, if I'm honest. Um, and by the end, I was actually glad that we'd finished. Um, I think it's doing something quite good in the fact that it's kind of saying these are the conversations we have in, in quiet and when we think no one else is listening. Um, but by the end of it, I kind of felt like that was done as a piece. And as I said, because it felt like, to me, it felt more like short stories. I think as I was reading it, I was kind of feeling like how many short stories on the same theme can we read? Um, so this is quite a mixed book for me and I was a little bit underwhelmed, I think. Um, but yeah, it's not that it was bad, it wasn't. I just don't think that, I don't think it was as good as it could have been. I think this is her debut, so I always kind of add a couple points on when they're debuts of it's like learning how to do this thing and what works and what doesn't work. Um, and uh, there were some really interesting bits in here, there were some really interesting conversations that I felt like I haven't had yet with people, which I found um, to be to be something that I was kind of a little bit obsessed with, like, will this conversation come to me at that time in my life? Um, but I was just a little bit let down by elements of that, unfortunately. The next one that I picked up for Halloween was Things We Say in the Dark by Kirsty Logan, which is a short story collection of horror stories. Um, and I did like these, it's definitely, definitely, definitely some of the stories clicked with me more than others. I think there's quite a mix of different kinds of horror in there. I think some of them were more like uncomfortable gross out horror than like make, made me feel scared horror. And I'm way more on the side of want, I want to feel scared, I don't want to feel grossed out, that's not like my thing. Not not that like gore completely grosses me out but just that that kind of sick feeling isn't what I'm looking for, I'm looking for that kind of buzzy like uh, feeling um, and they were a bit of a mix so I enjoyed some of them more than others. Probably the bit I enjoyed most about the whole collection which I thought was really clever is that um, there are author's notes throughout the book um, which tell you kind of what she's up to as she is writing this story and though that continuous narrative probably drew me um, more than some of the stories in here. Um, my favourite one was one which was like a checklist on essentially like horrible things that happen when you go to sleep as though it was like a medical assessment. Um, that properly scared me. I made Tom read that and I felt I read it alone um, one night when he was working and I did feel like that probably like all oh, feeling. Um, it's also like whilst they're scary stories and some of them are just there to be scary, a lot of them are like really metaphorical fears. Um, I particularly found the ones around what it would feel like to be pregnant to be quite terrifying in like a lower level like existential horror rather than just like oh yeah that's nasty feeling um so yeah i did i did enjoy it but i would say that there's a mix of those different kinds and i'm quite fussy um when it comes to horror there's only a few types of writers and and types of horror that really get me um but some of these absolutely hit it some of them just not what scares me just i i just feel like i want to put it down um yeah, it was kind of a mixed one as well. The next one I received for review from Granta, and that is The Topeka School by Ben Lerner. Uh, and this book I loved, but I'm still slightly confused by. Um, the best way to describe it is that this is a very small story of kind of one family telling the story of lots and lots of larger issues in America at the moment. Um, things in this book feel like they're very like allegorical. You feel as though you can read the surface level story and your brain starts connecting things with larger issues um, underneath as you're going through and it's also just complicated and beautifully written. I think when I talked about this in my college recommendations I compared it to um, Ali Smith's Autumn um, but like an American version so that's kind of how I feel this book sits within other things. Um, I enjoyed it. I think I definitely will read more of his writing. The writer, I did go and have a look after it because I was like, I enjoyed this an awful lot, but some of it I still don't 100% get. And I wanted to check, is this just me? Does everyone else like know exactly what's going on? Um, and the author did an interview where he was saying that he never wants to be like totally transparent and clear at all times. He kind of wants you to have to work. His aim isn't intelligibility. Um, so which made me feel a little bit better. Um, and also made me feel a little bit nervous for reading more because I did have to work quite hard at points to know where we were 
other times it felt really effortless. It was just really interesting how certain things I'd, I'd immediately see what the underlying conversation was and other things I couldn't see like for the life of me. Really interesting, really enjoyable. Um, one that will kind of tax your brain a little bit, um, but still is just a really good story. So yeah, that was the Topeka School. And the last book I read was a children's book, and that is The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse by Charlie Maxley. The font's kind of hard to read his surname. Um, this is a beautiful little children's book, but it's also like, could easily not just be for children. I cried like three times reading this book. Um, it's just a book about like vulnerability and friendship and about how it's okay not to be okay and the art style is like, absolutely stunning, I love it. Um, and it's just kind of telling us about how we go through the world and that it's okay to do it in different ways and just it's so beautiful. Um, yeah, there are things in here that I could have done with hearing when I was like 16, 17 so I'd expected it to be like quite gentle and it, it's gentle but it's also like so honest and this is probably one of the books I've been reading the most this month um, and I read it in one sitting really fast but as I said I just kept crying I just couldn't stop crying because I felt like this flipping horse who's like kind of the like like friend who's wise in the group I felt like the horse was telling me things I just wanted someone to tell me and it made me cry so that's that one I would really recommend it it's a beautiful book um, and a really gorgeous way of telling that story. It, it To start with I was worried it was going to feel like preachy but actually it really doesn't and even though there's some quite essential things about just like looking after yourself and it being okay to mess up sometimes and that doesn't mean you're a bad person. I think we all kind of need to hear that sometimes. So yeah, the boy, the mole, the fox and the horse. So hopefully you've enjoyed hearing me talking about what I've read in October. As I said there's not that many books this month but there should be a few more in November. I feel like I've like when I was scrolling back through my Goodreads to find the books I'd read I was like oh yeah and that one and that one and that one and then I was like uh, no there's are Novembers and I'm like okay because we're 10 days into November but I've probably read like four or five books this month already um yeah hopefully you enjoyed and I'll see you guys soon in another video my next one is going to be talking about um the state of my TBR and um what books I've added to it most recently so I'll see you guys then bye Thank you.